Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be planting husk cherries, or what some people call ground cherries. But uh, we're gonna, just going to make a small bed for them. Um, some people even have them grow wild. Yep. But sure, don't ever put a husk cherry seed where you don't want to <laughs> <No>. plant. <laughs> they are a, they are a, they make weeds look bad. But uh, guys, we're going to get over here. We're in the we're in the metal raised bed garden today. And uh, we're going to be working over in one of the smaller 40 inch by 40 inch boxes over by the arch. And uh, we're going to get these husk cherries in. And uh, we're going to keep them, this year we're going to keep them out of the way of other things. Last couple of years, <laughs> they've managed to invade our watermelon patch. Yeah. And uh, they just keep coming back. You'll never be able to pick them all. And the ones that lay on the ground have about 10,000 seeds in them. So we'll show you those seeds here in a little bit when we get to planting. But they are awful small and they are an awful pain. So. <laughs> Guys, uh, let's head over here to the to the raised bed garden and uh, let's get these husk cherries in the ground and uh, we'll tell you a little bit more on them as we go along. So let's head over there. What you got there? I got a roly poly. You got a roly poly bug? Yeah. Oh, he's tickly. Oh, I dropped him. Dropped him. I got him back. Got him back? All right, guys. We're out here at the raised bed garden and today we're going to be planting our husk cherries. A lot of people call them ground cherries or husk cherries. They grow on the ground. They've got a bit of a sh paper shell on them, but they look like a yellowish orange cherry growing on the ground. I don't know any other way to put it. But you got a wasp by you. We're gonna try to. They got a wasp by me. He took off. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to come up your leg. He was gonna come up my leg. That's yeah. a dangerous situation. Yeah. I'm in shorts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, guys. We're going to try to do this all in one shot. So, what, what we're doing is we're planting these husk cherries. Husk cherries are grown in fine peat. So, you don't have to do too much to do them. So, probably not going to be that long of a video. But, we got about a half a bale of peat here. That bed sunk in pretty good. So, we're we'll using peat as a lot of times we'll use it as filler. But, uh, in this instance, this is what husk cherries want to grow in. So, We'll go ahead and get this spread out. Let Tina work on that for a minute here. Make a mess. Let you make a mess. You just want to bust it up real fine. This old powdery peat moss they sell is awful, awful fine to begin with. You should probably wear a mask when you work with it. But guys, there isn't a whole lot to plant in these things. Not a whole lot to explain to you. Um, one thing is, is that the seeds are incredibly small. They have to, they put them in a seed pouch when you buy them, and inside of that comes a folded paper pouch with these incredibly small seeds. So we don't, we don't even attempt when we plant them. We don't even attempt to make holes for them or anything. You just want to tickle them right into the surface of the dirt. Uh, we'll get our bed leveled out here, and then. Uh, Probably going to throw just a little bit of fertilizer on it. We'll tickle that in at the same time we tickle the seeds in. But that's looking pretty good. Yeah. Alright. Go ahead. We're going to be using again. We're going to be using the Job's tomato. Wait one second. There we go. The Job's vegetable and tomato. You know, we'll use her secret couple of handfuls our bag broke down like I said this got it in the bucket here so That's easier to carry in a bucket anyway. hush cherries are very aggressive growers they don't mind a little bit of fertilizer you don't have to pay them too much of mine though they're a they're pretty much a weed yeah they grow like a weed yeah they grow like a weed too we've had them take over our uh, watermelon bed the last couple of years and uh, not overly happy about that yeah, come around here, Tina. Show them these. Uh... I am barefoot. We're making her walk barefoot in the harsh. All right, guys. Inside your seed packet, you're going to find a folded paper thing. And inside of that, you're going to find itty bitty tiny yellow seeds. Tiny. Tiny, tiny. We'll let Tina get back around to the other side here. A 
those old wood chips are prickly. Those are those aren't our regular malts. Those are those are just right out of the chipper truck. But what she'll do is she's just sprinkling them over the surface of the ground. Try to get them as even as you can, and don't spill them in the cabbage because for sure they'll come up down there. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, anywhere you put these seeds, they'll come up. So. Let T get them on there real lightly. I saw the breeze blow them over there. Now you're going to be picking picking cherries out of your lettuce or your cabbage plants. Well, I'm all the time weeding. <laughs> But the directions say you want them just barely covered. The easiest way we found to do is just sprinkle them right on the surface and then tickle them in by hand. So when you go to tickle them in, you know you want to make sure you don't move the ground a lot. You know, or move it all to one area. You'll sweep them out of one area and double them up in another. So let you get back around here. A few extra stuck to my hand. A few extra stuck to your hand? All right, so I made you plant like 12,000? At least. At least. You just barely want to tickle the surface of the ground around a little bit. Get them just below the surface. Watering will take care of a lot of it too. You can get a, a little more aggressive watering. I mean, you still don't want to puddle your water, but it takes a good amount of water to get dry peat wet anyway. So, she gets done tickling these in, I'll shut the camera off and move around to the other side where she can, uh, so she can water without getting the rest of us wet. But guys, that's all you really do is just dust the surface, don't, don't throw them from one area to the next. And it would take them two weeks to germinate. They say it takes them about two weeks to germinate? Yep. Uh, guys, don't expect them to come up right away, so... We'll go around here, we'll get set up, and then we'll let uh, Tina get these watered in here. Run some water out of there. We've been running water, but you want to make sure that you don't boil your plants. So we usually wait until the water gets cool. And finish the sputtering. And finish the sputtering. <laughs> the hose gets air in it. I don't know how many miles of hose we own. A lot. A lot. <laughs> it's hard to keep it from puddling on peat. So what you do is you water just a little bit. You let that soak in. Then you wash your legs. And you, then you wash your legs? Yeah. You taking a shower for all these people? But it's hard. It's hard to get that peat moss to take the water at first. So it's a it's a game of patience. <laughs> but you still got to get them all the way watered in. So guys, what we'll do? We'll get a soak on these now. We'll probably come back in a little bit and I'll water these again off camera. But we'll probably just call that good for now. We're starting to puddle up. Yeah. But, say hi to everybody, T. <laughs> You get done with your shower? Yeah. <laughs> My legs are nice and cooled off, though. Your legs are nice and cooled off? They're still dirty. They're still dirty? Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. All right, guys. That is how you plant husk cherries. Like I said, they're a small, cherry-looking, orangish-yellow. Um, they have kind of a citrus flavor to them, though. One of the things about husk cherries is that they seem to taste different to everybody. But we like to eat them just fresh, and we like to make jam out of them. They make an excellent jam. So, guys, if you're going to be planting husk cherries this year, that's all there really is to it. It's not a big deal. You uh, get you some fine peat is what they really want. Use a balanced fertilizer, and uh, you just tickle them right into the surface of the ground. Finish watering them down, and uh, what did you say? Two weeks on the germination. Yeah. Two weeks on the germination. So. And we should have husk cherries growing. But don't put these things anywhere you don't want them. 
not only will they come in that year, but they'll come in the next year and the next, next year. year and the next year. There's no way that you'll be able to pick them all off. So you're going to have them falling on the ground and they will come up again. Now, if you do have an area that you want to uh, want to keep them in for a longer time, you can plant them in a little bit bigger area and just let them kind of self-seed themselves. They may be able to do that. I I know they can here. I don't know if they can do it up north, but... I don't know. Yeah. But I know that they make a really tasty jam that tastes an awful lot like apple jam. They make a really tasty jam that tastes like apple jam? Yeah. Or it might taste like banana jam or pineapple jam or... Yeah, it's like everybody seems to think that, that the jam tastes like something different. Yeah. <laughs> I think it tastes like apple. I think it tastes like apples. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll go ahead and let that water sink in. We'll come back here in a little bit and uh, we'll water it again. What do you think, T? Hey? I would call it done. You'd call right it done? Now, yeah. All righty. We'll let you guys go. Wave goodbye to everybody. <laughs> we'll be right back. All righty, guys. That's about going to wrap it up for the Hush Cherry video today. Like we were telling you before, they're a, they're a wonderful little fruity berry, but uh, we can't ever decide what they actually taste like. No. So Tina's pretty sure they taste like apple pie. But, uh, <laughs> Cue the chicken again. <laughs> All right, guys. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get over here and... Uh, Boy, that chicken's a pain. Hang on a second. I'm going to go wring his neck. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you like the content here on the channel, we hope you'll consider subscribing. And uh, down next to the subscribe button is a bell. If you'll ring that bell, that'll send you a notification whenever I'm wringing a chicken's neck. But, uh... Guys, if you liked the video today, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, then uh, ask a chicken. So, or just leave them down in the comment section. We try to get to all of them. So, guys, we're going to get out of here. And uh, the chickens are obviously not going to let us film today. So, we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>798 so we had almost 800 but let me uh sorry the camera's shaking it is balanced on top of a box of q-tips that is uh on top of that is my wallet on top of that is the tv remote so let me uh get this camera moved around we'll get focused on the comment picker itself and then we're going to pick us a winner guys so hang on one second we'll get down there and hit the start button all righty guys let's get down here and pick us a winner find out who's going to have a good Easter. T. Kimmy. That's going to be our winner. The entry is correct. Enter me. T. Kimmy, you are the winner of our drawing. I'm going to need you to get a hold of me. I'll try to reach out to you, but I'll need you to get a hold of me. I'll uh, put my email somewhere in the video here, and uh, you can send it, and we'll get you confirmed that it's you. And In the meantime, I'll go through and confirm that you're a subscriber of the channel and uh, looks like you're going to be our big prize winner so congratulations I hope everybody had a good time um, I'll be back in just a minute and uh, we'll talk to you a little bit more but it uh, looks like uh, T. Kimmy she's going to be our winner so alrighty guys 